Welcome in. You are listening to another episode of the Keep the Change podcast, and we've got the man back across from me, Josh Ryan, the man with 69,000 YouTube subscribers and 54.5 Instagram followers, probably 55 by the time you go and search for him. Mate, good to see you again. Cheers for having me. Good Not to be back. It's only just been 15 minutes since we turned the cameras off and then started again. But uh, hey, people don't know no, that no, at no, home. No, no. <laughs> In this episode, mate, what I wanted to do is give you a challenge and see if you could teach people how to make 100k online Sweet. so no um you know no small feat but i think the reason that this is interesting is that you've done this so it's not actually that scary no <laughs> but, but for a lot of people they're like well hang on because i think in new zealand roughly one in nine people make a hundred thousand dollars in a year yeah now I think you could probably teach some people how to do that without having to go to uni, without having to get a job, like whatever, right? Uh, but also there'll be people who might be not aspiring to make 100K, but they've got a side hustle or they are monetizing something that they're interested in, but they don't really know how to grow that. So I guess firstly, if you were going to try and make 100K in the next 12 months online, using the tools you already have and the knowledge you have, how would you do it? With the tools and knowledge I already have? Yeah. I mean, so considering I know how to like grow an audience on social media and, and get attention, like I would just dive straight into using that to help businesses do that. I think if you can go in and use, if you can learn any skill that can help make businesses more money, you're always going to do pretty well because businesses are always going to want to get more customers make more from their customers like if you can learn one of those skills uh especially something that's not taught at university because naturally you're gonna have less people doing it Mm. like there's no course at university for like how to grow on youtube uh so if you know that there's probably very few people who can do it well same with i think you talked about on the podcast a while ago someone who'd built shopify stores yeah like there's no no one teaches that at university so if you learn how to do that really well it's probably only going to take you a couple months uh, and all of a sudden you can have a pretty profitable skill right away that will help businesses that you can then sell to them for a thousand dollars a couple of thousand dollars um, and straight away start earning some money so there's three things that i've picked up and and this was we'll start with what you'd do but you've got these skills right so you'd build audience but that's a skill that you've already got so you're yeah. sticking close to something you know you're not overcomplicating it, not like, yeah. fuck, I'm going to create like a crypto course or something like that, um, which you could naturally do if you wanted to and then build an audience to sell to. Look at my crypto account. I should not be teaching anything <laughs> to do with that. Sweet. So build audience. But you also said something that I think is really smart that I don't think a lot of people think about. I think Kiwis go the other way. They're like, I need to sell to people, to the consumer, because that's what they've done. Like they've been the purchaser. Yeah. Or they've like, I've been through this and I paid for this and it cost X, Y, Z so I could do it, but do it cheaper or do it a little bit differently. But you said something that I don't think a lot of people click to and that is help businesses. Yeah. Is that, but like, why is that? You sort of um, explained, but yeah, why, why did your brain go that way rather than consumers? I mean, it's really easy to just, like if you can get them good results, it's really easy to justify a purchase. Um you don't have to like convince someone that your product's really cool to sell to like a person, which can work as well. Like if you want to go down that route. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you can come to a business and say, hey, I can build you a store or I can do your email marketing or I can run your Facebook ads or your Google ads or whatever it's going to be. And you're going to spend this much, you're going to make this much. Like it's a pretty easy sell. Yeah. Um, and I guess the other thing is they've got a lot more money to spend unless you're selling to like high end individuals then chances are businesses are going to be spending more money than people are. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to give you uh, – oh, and you also said the third thing. Sorry, before I jump ahead. You would pick something that other people don't know how to do. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, again, that's not what we do in New Zealand. We're like, let's all go study the same shit and get the same degrees and get the same jobs, but go and work for different places. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. So I'm going to give you a hypothetical. You – need to help me grow my chiropractic clinic clinic in Huntley. Yeah. Yeah. How many people in Huntley is there? Like it's no. a pretty small base we're working with, all right? Yeah. So you roll in and um I don't have any clients. 
because no one knows about me, what are you going to teach me? Or what are you going to sell to me? I mean, for something in a really small region, like where you're trying to target, like you can only sell to people in Huntley if you've got a chiropractor store, like clinic there, like you can't sell to someone in Nelson or Christchurch. Uh, you're probably going to be looking at how to do some sort of Google ads or Facebook ads and just spend a small amount of money so that anytime someone searches chiropractor in Huntley, you're going to pop up. It might because there's probably not that many people searching for it. It's probably only going to cost a couple of dollars a day that you're going to be spending to be number one for that. Yeah. And then anytime someone in Huntley is looking for a chiropractor, you're going to pop up. That's probably going to be one of the best ways for something like that where it's really niche, really small region. Yeah. Um, creating like how-to videos on YouTube isn't probably going to be the best way because, you know, it could help them add revenue to their business if they started teaching that. They mm. could put it on YouTube. They could show it to people all over the world and make an income from that, but it's not going to be very overnight. Whereas yeah. if you learn how to do Facebook ads, Google ads, something like that, um, you could get a pretty quick return for them. And would it be worth someone in Huntley, a chiropractor, would it be worth them having an Instagram presence? It'd be good to have a presence. Um, if they're only targeting people locally, it's probably not that important that they're like hammering it every day with content. Yeah. But you still want to have something there so that if someone searches it, you pop up, you've got some stuff there. They can get to know a little bit about what, what you're up to, a bit of your personality maybe, um, and just build up a bit more trust to, to then want to work with you. Okay. Now, you get kicked out of Huntley because you got caught up with the gangs. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And we've sent you down to Christchurch clean you up for a bit but you can only work with chiropractors but there's a shitload more chiropractors in Christchurch what are mm -hmm. you going to do for them in Christchurch how would it be different I mean you probably still do those same fundamentals as well because for like a small local business like that you're going to want to show up number one for your search rankings you probably in that situation would start posting a bit more content like Facebook TikTok Instagram maybe yeah. some short videos you know dismissing a few misbeliefs um, or, or myths that people think about that. Uh, yeah. Maybe some situations where hiring a chiropractor is going to be helpful uh, and just giving away some content around that would be pretty useful. Yeah, You'd potentially also do a bit more email marketing. Um, although you'd want to stick to one main skill, to be honest. Like I don't think it's you, – you could go really broad and do everything. But if you just got really good at, at doing that email marketing or really, really good at doing the Google ads, then you could just pick up a bunch of clients and get really good at that. Because yeah. if you're trying to do email marketing, content marketing, ads, all of these things, like it's going to be tricky to get really good at one, especially on a short time frame. Yeah. Uh, so I probably would focus more on one aspect, to be honest. Yeah. So you could go to the chiropractors, for instance, and say, how many... How many clients do you have? Like, what's your database? How often are you emailing them? Well, actually, we've got some data on the fact that if you email them X amount more times per year, then, you know, potentially you're going to bring more people back in. You want to be emailing them proactively ahead of the summer season to get their spine in alignment for yeah. the summer holiday yeah. uh, or something like that. So you would basically be trying to help a business make more money so that you could then prove to them that whatever you charge them it was worth their spend. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, I, with email, I don't even know. The stats are pretty crazy. I don't know what they exactly are, but most businesses don't email their customers at all. No. And there's like a gold mine there because if you've got a bunch of people that have already spent money with you, already know your product, like it, and you send them an email, that's obviously going to convert so much better than trying to run some paid ads to people who have no idea who you are, might not even need your services. And like I can tell you that this – is a business because I've met a guy and this is what he does. Yeah. He basically helps people with their email marketing. So uh, onboarding sequences, um, rewarming clients or customers back up, selling to the database, educating them, basically builds a bespoke strategy per individual client. Yeah. So it just shows you it's, it's a good example of basically what you said before where Kiwis don't learn how to do it. You don't learn it at uni, but you could easily learn it online. Yeah. And you could go and probably do it for free for somebody. Yeah. And then get them some results, use those as your proof, and then start get dirty in the DMs to the Christchurch chiropractors. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They say, Hey, you align my spine, I'll align your fucking emails. <laughs> so I'm getting excited now. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Okay. exactly. And I mean if you get a blueprint that works really well there, there's 
no reason why you can't take that exact blueprint and sell it to a, a chiropractor in Sydney and Ooh. then one in LA and then one in, I don't know, Paris. Like you can work with people from anywhere and chiropractor businesses are probably going to be relatively similar. Mm. Um, seen it's in like the sort of health industry, there might be some different guidelines around advertising um, and what you can and can't claim, but like it's pretty much the same. So you could just take that exact same blueprint and duplicate it. Once you've built it once and it's getting results, uh, you can sell it to a lot of people. So you could get paid in Australian dollars, US dollars, euros, exactly. pesos, yeah. whatever you need, cryptos. Yeah, because <laughs> I mean, if you work with one in Christchurch and then you go to the, another one in Christchurch, they might get a little bit upset that you're doing the same yeah. thing for everyone. Yeah. Um, maybe you can charge them a little bit more by only working with them. Mm. don't know. Bit of exclusivity. Um, yeah, exactly. Especially if you're good at what you're doing. Yeah. But yeah, and you could have one in Dunedin, one in Nelson, one in Christchurch, Wellington, Auckland, Huntley. Huntley, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like uh, once you get the win too, often people then have that belief of, oh, well, they're working with that, yeah. such and such. So then they have like you don't they don't need as much convincing that you're the right person because they've already built the trust through somebody else that they trust. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you probably have more confidence in yourself. Um, as well like if you know that you've worked with a similar business and got really good results like when you go into that meeting you're going to be pretty confident that you can get them results and you're probably not like desperate uh, yeah. at the same time because you know they need you probably more than you need them mm. yeah I think that's where Kiwis probably could pick up a couple of lessons of thinking right who charges something that is expensive and therefore there's going to be margin in it so if i can help them get more of that then naturally they'll be willing to let go of a piece of that profit yeah. because they're going to see well this works so then why wouldn't i do it yeah yeah exactly yeah and yeah i guess there's no barriers internationally because like, how, how many times have you gone face to face with the clients in america and stuff not very often i mean i've been over to america a few times to go to events yeah. um and i've met people that have turned into clients but yeah most people we work with never meet face to face and what do you use to communicate like zoom or yeah just zoom whatsapp uh slack as well for yeah managing all of that side of things yeah wow sweet so you wouldn't actually just focus on well you wouldn't focus on just new zealand because why not you know you can get a 60 percent pay increase or 70 percent by going straight yeah. to the u.s yeah, you might start with someone in your hometown because if you don't have any results or anything like that, it might be you might have a little bit rapport, more rapport with um, someone locally. They might yeah. be more willing to give you a shot. Uh, but then once you've got the case studies, then you can go go from there. And yeah. I mean, that's what I did when I finished high school. The first person that I worked with, I didn't charge them anything. Um, and I had an account that had a ton of followers at the time. So I like, could have very easily charged, but we just did it for free. Yeah. Um, got him results and yeah then then we actually started charging him later down the line and he referred us to other people in future and yeah yeah it's I think the way to go I think a lot of people especially in these skills if you've just learned it yourself it's probably and you haven't actually practiced it in theory like there's mm. not it's not that valuable until you've actually done it and got results like if you just watch some YouTube videos you've probably got a good idea but I think too many people try and charge heaps up front before they've actually done it. Um, yeah. And then if they don't deliver, then they probably shoot all their confidence. Yeah. And then you're like, this doesn't work. And reputation. Because yeah. if you charge that business tons of money and then you get them awful results and don't know how to do any of it, then yeah. 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 Okay. So stick to something that you understand that you can actually like genuinely do yeah. and, and back it up with the results. Yeah, look yeah. at something that maybe you've got a slight competitive advantage in for whatever reason. Like if if you are really into sports and, and you want to go into marketing, like how could you try and work with an athlete or a sports brand or something like that? Like the because, Warriors. Yeah, Sorry. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> go in there and work with the Warriors. Yeah. Um, I think that's what they've done in their content team. Yeah. Some people that were good at content are now managing their content yeah. on their socials. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, mm. I know... Um, I don't know the guy's name, but sort of know of a guy in Nelson that um, played a lot of rugby and then now he's like a photographer that does all the, a lot of content for a bunch of rugby teams. I'd even um, go into Vodafone. Yeah. One NZ, sorry. That'd be a great place to go and do heaps of marketing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you knew what you were doing. Yeah. But yeah. if you like know an industry really well, if you're a personal trainer and you're trying to get into marketing, work with personal trainers because you, you know the language that they're going to be speaking and all of that. 
which sets you apart from the marketing agency that knows nothing about personal trainers. Yeah. Um, so like those little things where you might have a slight edge on everyone else because you know it a little bit better or you're really passionate about it yeah. or something along those lines that will help you just stand out that little bit more. I think that everybody always wants more of two things and it's usually, especially in business, more attention and more money. Yeah. And even just humans. Like they can't, people can't listen to this kind of like, oh, I've never asked for a pay rise or expected one. Yeah. Like, you know, so even if you could teach people how to get a pay rise. Yeah. Exactly. Something like that. It's the same for, you know, everyday people. Yeah. Uh, that are thinking about what their own problems are. Like there'll be something that people have solved and done well before that other people need help with. Yeah. But usually it comes back to needing the attention to start with to then be able to show them or then charge them. Yeah. Mm. Which, you need to have like, yeah, case studies that you actually can get the results yeah. that you're claiming because otherwise, yeah, who's going to believe you? If you don't have like, like I've not got a degree, didn't go to university, any of that stuff. So I can't say like, you know, here's my here's my degree, but I can go in and say like, you know, here's a account we've grown or here's a client we've grown, which yeah. is going to be more important to most business owners yeah yeah they're not gonna be like and could you show us your degree now josh yeah <laughs> and well a lot of business owners haven't been to uni either and so it's like nah. <laughs> they want to see results as well yeah so back to the top so basically like solve a problem that you can actually solve and i've written down here and sometimes i often say like solve a high value problem yeah i like that yeah because then there's always a bit of margin in there for you and if yeah. you can do it for people and they don't know how to do it they're usually pretty impressed yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is getting us on our path to 100K. Uh, and then I guess it's just rinse and repeat from there, right? Like Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. What about for the people who might have, you know, uh, um, a side hustle or a hobby that they've monetized or even creating some content? Let's go down that second, secondly. But firstly, just people that have got an Instagram page and they're doing something, but they don't feel like they're breaking the back of it. Yeah. What are they probably not doing right on their Instagram or in their business uh, model. What So like someone that's like a creator sort of thing, that's like building an audience here as opposed to like a business owner. Let's do business owner first and then the content creator. Yeah. But let's say they've got a product that they sell via Instagram and it's actually, it works, the market buys it, but yep. then the, the sales slow down, their Instagram stops growing. Like what do they need to be doing? Probably more content. More often than not, that's a big issue is, is getting more content out there. Uh, and more content that's like going to be interesting for the audience they're trying to reach. Um, a lot of people on social media will just post stuff that's sort of like, you know, it might be like, here's a pretty picture of our product and so on, which can be good. But if you can create like interesting content around uh, what your target audience is going to be interested in, then you're going to do a lot better. Um yeah. Like, for example, I mean, girls that invest in Auckland, uh, like she's just posting valuable insights around investing all day long on social media, has built a massive audience from it, and then makes a really good income through brand deals and that just by hammering content that's A, multiple times a day, and B, is going to be really useful to the people that she is trying to reach. Yeah, nice. So going wider than just your product, basically. Yeah, yeah, like if you sell supplements um, around health and wellness, like you could create a bunch of videos giving people tips of like what you should take, why you should take it, how it imp implements, uh, how it benefits you, yeah. um, as well as potentially some habits that might have nothing to do with your product but would still serve the people you're trying to reach. Mm. It might be around your sleep habits or it might be around your exercise habits. It's not necessarily selling a product but it'll be valuable, insightful for the target customers you're looking for who will then find you through that and then they'll be like oh they've got a, a product that i might buy how important do you think at the moment it is to be doing content that is like you you know where it's the person because a lot of people are scared to be the face of the brand and things like that but it seems like that's what people are wanting to follow these days as, as an individual yeah it definitely definitely helps with building like rapport when they see you're a real person with a real story with real experiences um and they can put a face to the name yeah yeah okay i think it's pretty important like there's ways around that you can write blog posts or send emails or do like text-based content on instagram mm -hmm. where it might not necessarily be a video but i think it's really important yeah i was thinking about buying an um, ai avatar of me oh yeah and then giving it copy yeah to read out as a video 
<laughs> and seeing how it goes down. Could be a good like marketing stunt. Yeah. Um, I had one of them reach out to me for a brand deal or something. I haven't looked into it much, but it looks kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not going to humans connect with humans. So yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Do you have any examples of people who have like crushed it in this space? So say they've got a product that sells well, they come to you and they're basically like, we know that we can sell through Instagram, through YouTube, through content. Like help us sell more stuff. Yeah. Anything come to mind? A lot of the people that we've worked with and are not so much product based, but more services. So okay. like a lot of a lot of consultants, um, sometimes agencies, that sort of world where it's very like educational. Uh, and we've worked with them to get good results through Instagram and YouTube because then you can just crank out like how to videos yeah. that are gonna serve the right people and then eventually when they've got the next problem, they're gonna come and work with you. Similar to my own content. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can basically like the how to do some of the stuff, but eventually people get in touch and they're like, just do it for me. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. if you think about it, like if you've given heaps of little valuable tips and tricks and stuff like that, like if someone's struggling with their hashtags on Instagram and they watch one of your videos and get something and then it gets them a result and then they're struggling with what to post on their stories and they watch mm. something of yours and they, they get a result and it works well, like it's all of this reinforcement that uh, what you're doing works. Yeah. And then when they need a bit more help and they reach out, they're probably just going to work with you because they already know your stuff is good. What about content creators that are bashing out content but aren't pulling the cash in? What are, what could they be doing differently, do you think? Um, probably just really trying to understand like who their audience actually is. It's probably a big one. Uh, it's not something I do lots of, working with like influencers slash creators, more on like the business slash education side of things yeah um but yeah understanding who their audience is and like what products are going to solve their problems and potentially even building their own yeah okay yeah um all right i'll take you back to the top so basically we've got to make 100 grand in 12 months but you still are allowed the skills that you have and the tools that you have but you've got no followers or anything so you're back to zero with your followers and, yep. your, and your credibility as such, but you've still got your education and the equipment. So what do you, so I'd imagine you're probably just going to recreate what you've already done and do it faster? Pretty much. Yeah. Like, yeah. And how do you start? I would just start real simple with iPhone videos, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be fancy. So I'd probably be putting out a video every couple of weeks that might be breaking down how to do something how something works how to increase your results if we if we see that email marketing was the skill it might just be a video every second week about you know how to improve your emails and then from that people will find it work with you you can do the cold outreach and that as well yeah. where you're sending someone a dm on linkedin and LinkedIn. adding value to what they're doing yeah um figuring out how you can help yeah have you have you done much of that before in the have past i did not on yeah. linkedin on instagram yeah. so i would um I was just message people and it was real straightforward. Like back in the day, I'd just be like, I, I can double your following um, pretty quickly. Wow, uh, big bold claim. Yeah. yeah. Well, I had a big audience at the time, so I could mm. just hammer them with promotions. Um, oh, yeah. You could get your audience to follow them kind of yeah, thing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah. It, it was a pretty easy offer to make. Yeah. Um, and that was before everyone was doing it. Now there's like a million people a day that are in my DMs like, you know, I can, what is it? It's all like add 100K views in 90 days to your right. content. Yeah. Yeah. Um, most of them don't even post short form content, but you know, yeah, I get yo man, that. your videos are great, but fuck, they're poorly edited. They obviously don't say that. But they're like, they reckon they could look way better. I'm like, yeah, cheers. Yeah, I'm like, nah, I'm not so interested. Eh? Yeah, fair. <laughs> uh, but I can't. I'm sometimes like, is this just a mass message or is it actually genuine? Yeah. But then I go to their account, they might have a thousand followers or something. I'm like, well, yeah, I don't know. I might yeah. do it yourself then, heaps. But. I mean, some people love that whole like cold outreach of like send 10,000 messages a day that are random. I've always been of the approach of like, you know, how can I get really specific and you might message five people in a day, but it's like you listen to their podcast, you figure out something about them that you can help yeah. and, you, and you do it that way. Um, or you look at their website and you're like, that needs to change. Like send them a message, say, you know, you could you could improve this specific thing here and then they know that you actually care. Um yeah and you're doing something about it because if that person came back to you and they edited one of your videos, like one of your 60 second shorts, which is going to take them 30 minutes to edit, you'd probably be a lot more susceptible to like working with them. Yeah. So offer them something first almost. Yeah. yeah. I definitely like people have made a video and been like, Oh, what do you think of this? I'm like, well, shit, that's pretty, yeah. yeah. I'm like, well, I'll post it and see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I think it's a good strategy, yeah, like giving away something first or actually proving that you can do what yep. it is that you're saying you can do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think the Kiwis like struggle with that selling piece, I reckon. Yeah. And even we don't then like to be sold to often as well. I think that's the, the tricky thing for Kiwis. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've never really been like i've never really been a big like sales person i've always just given heaps of value through my youtube content and through just content in general whether it's on instagram facebook whatever yeah. and then people are coming to me they already know me like me trust me yeah. and so i'm just trying to figure out if we can solve their problem uh, and it's not really a sales no. like it's not like a ringing someone up cold calling trying to like get your attention get your interest get them yeah. to buy like it's very much a like if we can solve their problem, we'll work with them. We'll get them good results. And and, um, yeah. Yeah. And then they might go and tell their mate who is in a similar industry uh, and they put me in touch and then there's already that trust factor there. And yeah. so if we can solve their problem, then okay. it's pretty straightforward. What advice would you give people that are trying to figure out like, what they're interested in or where they could point this energy? Because you obviously found something at a young age where you liked this Instagram piece, right? But you could have, like, you've been doing it for now for over six years, right? Yeah. So you obviously do really enjoy it. Because most people, if you didn't, you'd be like, I'm, I'm out of here. Right yep. now, you would have found something else. Do you have any, like, can you look back to earlier years and figure out how you found that thing for yourself? I think it was just being curious and trying out, like, a lot of different um different things like it probably came from from reading different books around like business and marketing and stuff like that which led me to want to create i think it was from everyone talking about vision boards that i then created yeah. an instagram that was pretty much like a vision board sort of thing i see um i'm not sure what the best advice is to be honest around mm. how to find what you're into try a lot of different things yeah, yeah. stay curious although yeah. yeah that advice sometimes sometimes you also got to then just stick to one thing because i probably yeah. also made that mistake of like I tried to do a million different things at once um, mm. and that's not great either. So it's like trying to, yeah, play around with a few different things until you find something that you're into and then go for it. Yeah. Through your own journey of doing this and getting good at it and, and being able to interact with international customers and things like that and figure out how to get the money back here, what have been some of the biggest lessons that you've had, do you think? I mean, the big one's always like, how can we make sure it's obvious how much like value we're bringing to the other person? Uh, like if we can make it really clear how we're going to help them, what results we're going to get. Sometimes even making like guarantees of like, we'll get you this many followers or we'll help you achieve this result is like a big one. Um, yeah. Because then it makes it like a no brainer for them if they know they're going to get this end result. Like, you know, why would you not? Uh, if yeah. you trust that the person can actually deliver on it. Uh, that's probably been a big one uh opening up to just going worldwide has probably also been a big one like you can sell to people all over the world uh that are doing big things yeah. um you don't have to just stick to new zealand or nelson or, or whatever yeah. wherever you might be huntley um yeah, yeah they're probably two big ones um so, so sort of think think bigger but then be value-led from the start too yeah yeah exactly and, and you're always focused on how can I deliver more value? Yeah. Yeah. Because if you can do that well, like you'll always succeed with it. Yeah. Uh, and so like instead of looking at like in my industry, if it's social media management, instead of like selling people that you're going to do a monthly management service, like you're focused on how you can generate them more leads for their business. Yeah. Uh, instead of it just being like 30 photos a month that you're going to take and then post, it's like, you know, how you can create a strategy that's going to get them more customers for their business. Email, I think, is a really good one, to be honest. Like, I, I potentially know. Not sure who you were talking about earlier when yeah. you mentioned someone, potentially know who it is. Yeah. Um, but that's a big one because you can come into so many businesses, especially e-commerce, have got, like, a big customer database and they just don't email them. Yeah. And so you can literally just come in, write an email, takes half an hour, send it, and it might make them thousands of dollars. Yeah. And so if you can charge them 10% and you add five ten thousand dollars $10,000 a month to their business, which isn't going to be that hard like i don't want to undersell it but like if they've got a big customer base and you're going to email people who've already bought and sell them products they already want and already trust it's not like hard to generate a lot of income for them and ask for a percentage of those total sales yeah you could and do a percentage that might be an easy way to get in the door like yeah. say like you know just pay us 10 percent of what we make here yeah uh, you might charge a retainer in future but yeah and 
you could probably look online and find examples of those emails, right? Like oh, if you, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Jake, there's probably a YouTube channel on... Uh, Heck yeah. <laughs> There'll be heaps. Yeah. Yeah. How to crush e-com email marketing. Yeah. There's yeah. massive. There's like hour-long tutorials on YouTube walking you through what to write. There's tons of different tutorials on like how to set everything up, like on the technical aspect. Yeah. Like there's so much for free on YouTube that you can go and watch. Yeah. Do you think that is... Have you done? Have you had like a mindset shift as well, or did you see what was possible so early that you've just always thought like this? I think like because I started doing it probably before I'd been out like in the real world too much. Like you probably do get, like you probably did see it was possible early yeah. on, before mm-hmm. you'd had like things that might cloud your judgment. Um, so I think I've always sort of seen it as possible. Yeah, yeah, because I think. You know, take that example there, right, around you could do an email for an e-commerce business. You may have a friend who is in e-commerce. You could almost say to them, hey, yeah, could I write you an email to your current customers and just see does this work and do it for yeah. free just to get some proof and just like I need to collect the data. Yeah, but 100%. I think a lot of people wouldn't do it because they'd be too scared to reach out to their friend to start with or they wouldn't even think this is possible. They're like, no, 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 I need to get a product in China and then put some margin on it and sell that. They want to go yeah. down that path. Like that's been, I think, the fashionable thing for a lot of people to do. Like maybe the, the whole Amazon thing. Yeah. There's people down there, but you've gone the service way. I like the service way. Yeah, there's probably more long-term potential if you can build a product that's really good, although the difficulty level of that is going to be way higher. Like mm. to learn how to come up with a unique idea, build the product, purchase it from a supplier in china and get it into warehouses and amazon yeah. which uh based in the us or wherever get all of that done handle all the international taxes of it like on the products is going to be a lot more effort than like learning how to write an email for a yeah. business uh, or learning how to run a facebook ad or a google ad is going to be way easier yeah i think that's where it comes back to like solve a high value problem yeah. because every business has its challenges every side hustle does every yeah other way to create income is challenging and it's just like going to work you still if you want to get paid extra you still have to go there on the saturday and do the overtime like yeah you know it's not just like they go oh you asked for it well done here you go you can have it you've still got to give something in return yeah and i think whatever business or direction you take or you're having you to try and make a hundred thousand dollars it's going to be challenging but that's part of the whole process Oh yeah, I mean, if it was easy, everyone would do it. Hey, like you're gonna yeah. have to. There's gonna be some challenge that's gonna be there mm. at some point. Um, I'm trying to think of the example, but do you know that Stephen Bartlett from Diary of a CEO? Yeah. The, I remember ages ago he was talking about that exact thing, like solving the high level problems, and he was talking. I think he said he started in PR and he was doing like PR for businesses, and then like one day he did like PR for this like big investment company that like raised a ton of money and like got paid like millions of dollars for it, and he's like. It's the same work as doing PR for a local business, but mm. all of a sudden, because he's solving the problem of a company trying to raise hundreds of millions of dollars, you might get a couple million instead of a couple thousand. Yeah. Um, because being ten percent better for a business that's trying to sell a million dollars a year is like a hundred k difference. Whereas if you're ten percent better for a hundred k a year business, like you're adding a lot less. If that makes sense. Yeah. So it's yeah. How how can we solve bigger problems should be something that we're always asking ourselves like that's, yeah. that, that there's a lot of value in that and you get paid to do that yeah hey what have your parents thought about this journey they've always been pretty encouraging that's pretty cool yeah They're not like fuck our son works on the internet we don't know what he does yeah, pretty much <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 i mean i had my first business when i was like nine which was a vending machine uh because like they encouraged me to like i don't know i can't remember the exact conversation but it was something about like you know you can dream big and stuff and like i wanted to go and watch messi play for barcelona but like we didn't have the money so dad's mm. like yeah sure but you got to figure out how you do it nice. <laughs> so i came back with these ideas i was like do a vending machine yeah and so they always yeah from day one i've always supported it wow and have you been and seen messi play football? yeah Far got out. to 2018 wow um at the start of the year i was like i'll give it a crack and go full time and then by the end of the year i'd done done all right and so i was like gonna go over and do a couple months in europe uh and yeah finish it off Got to watch him. It was pretty awesome. Shit, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Strong why. Your dad said you figure out the how to. Yeah. Got that much. done. And then uh what did that feel like sitting there watching him? Did you think unreal. about those conversations? Back yeah, in? yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's unreal. Uh he even like broke his arm like three weeks before the game. 
yeah. and it was like there was no chance he was going to play and i was like oh it's just you know it's what it is <laughs> and then like the day before they're like it got announced that he'd be fine he'd be playing and oh. i was like yeah how do you even recover from a broken arm in like three weeks i don't yeah. think his <laughs> you got interesting doctors i think some of those athletes yeah. for sure yeah yeah oh well he must have known that you were coming mate yeah i think yeah. so Hey, since you've been on YouTube for some time and even Instagram, are there some people that you've followed and watched their journey and sort of seen a lot of it and gone, yeah, holy definitely. shit, they've really blown up? Um, yeah, I mean, Iman Gaji, I don't know if you've seen him, but uh, I've been watching him for a long time uh, because he would have started, he's a similar age to me, like I think he's two weeks younger than me or something. Mm. Um and probably started at a similar time and he was actually flipping instagram accounts early days as well yeah uh and so watching his journey along the years has been really cool because he's yeah gone from nothing to like i don't know he's worth 50 plus million or something yeah. ridiculous two million followers maybe Is yeah, right? yeah 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 and doing yeah massive stuff so he's, he's been pretty cool to watch um and there's just other people that i've met along the journey that have done been working online that i've been in touch with that have built really cool things over the years it's yeah. pretty cool to watch yeah. That, and some of them don't post publicly, but yeah, you just see what they're up to. What's um, some of the events that you've been to that have been like, eye-opening for you or really valuable? Um, I've been to Funnel Hacking Live. So the yep. ClickFunnels um, one, I went 2018, 2019, 2020. Yeah. What did, um, you, what did you learn there? Because do you use ClickFunnels or had you? In the past I did. Yep. Uh, I don't really use it much now um because most of it's just content and then we've just really simplified it to the point where it's like content book a call mm. uh work with us if if it's the right fit so don't use it much now but honestly didn't learn heaps from the events themselves all the information you want is out there for free on youtube or in books but it was more the people you met like you just yeah. met so many people that were also doing the exact same thing um or that needed your help and that you could learn from every single time it was profitable straight away off like work that we got from it yeah. It would cost like 10 grand just about by the time you fly there, get your hotels, go to the event, get back easily. Yeah. Uh, but every time would make your money back straight away. I think that's something the Kiwis don't really understand or like we haven't done heaps of is actually going to things, especially when you're cutting your own path. Yeah. But trans, you know, transferring that money, you're like, okay, I might not get this back. But you, the people that you meet and even just understanding that people are on the same journey, yeah. I hear that so often. People are like, oh, it was amazing. Yeah exactly yeah. especially if there's not many people doing what you're up to yeah um because in new zealand there's a few people but none of them are really public about what they do they're all sort of behind the scenes yeah uh the people that are doing well in the social media space or a lot of them anyway all right mate well let's summarize so how possible is it to make 100k online from new zealand it's very possible if you give yourself enough time yeah. probably not going to happen next week <laughs> despite <laughs> what some of the ads you might see online might say <laughs> um but if you stick at it and you just learn a valuable skill mm. and you just don't give up like eventually you're going to get there so learn a valuable skill to so solve a solve a high value problem um build an audience think about who's going to pay you to solve that problem don't yeah. just yeah i think as well like don't just solve a problem that you've had like it's a good way to, it's a good place to start yeah but often you might be solving a problem that's not as big as you thought because you've just been so wrapped up in it yeah you know what i mean like often I'll see people start a business and I'm sort of like, oh, okay, like cool, you'll get some lessons down there, but you'll probably get to, you can see where the end of the runway is, but it was just something they were wanting to solve in the here and now. Yeah. But often these things to, to, to do bigger, if we think only one in nine Kiwis make over 100K, yeah. we've got to be doing something that eight and nine people aren't doing. Yeah. Yeah. So instantly you've got to start there and be like, okay, that therefore must mean that it has to be a pretty high value problem to solve. Yeah. And you've got to be pretty good at it. You've got to be able to back it up. You've got to have proof. You've got to be able to get clients' results. Yeah. Um, and be willing to think bigger than just New Zealand. Yeah, pretty much. I think there's a line. I don't know if you've read the book yet, but the one I recommended with Naval, um, Naval Ravikant, he's got a good line in one of his books where it's like, if you can figure out how to give people what they want but no, don't know how to get at scale is where you'll make the big money. Nice. Uh, whether that's individuals, like if you're trying to figure out what problems people have and how you can get it to them at scale or yeah. businesses, like they don't know how to figure out how to make a website. So how can you learn how to deliver that at scale? Yeah. Or it might be AI now. So how you can use AI to help businesses at scale or whatever the next new thing is that people don't know how to use, how you can figure out to solve that problem at scale will always be 
Always cable. work. Yeah. yeah. I actually went and Googled, or YouTube searched the vow after you said. Yeah. And I've got saved a three and a half hour video that I was ah. through. So I went back to the start. Yeah. And doubled down. Yeah. Is that the how to get rich without getting lucky? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Or even it might just be called like how to get rich or something. It's had millions of views. Yeah. But it is. Yeah. And it's quite, it's very like detailed and in depth and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's mostly like, a lot of that stuff, how to get rich, people think, okay, what are the magic steps? But really, a lot of it's like mindset training, right? Yeah. But also understanding some of the things we've just spoken about, about high value pieces. Yeah. And just doing the basics, right? Even that's something I'm trying to always do is like, hey, you just do the basics really, really well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Instead of trying to jump it. Like, yeah, how can you just get really, really good at operating whatever you're doing? Yeah. Nice, mate. Um, before we go, mate, what, what have you learned through or from the Keep the Change podcast? Like, what do you get out of it when you listen to it? Just curious. A big one is probably you guys really hammering home like increasing your income um, and, and looking at starting a business instead of like obviously investing's good and, and that side of things there but like that's probably been a big one for me. Yeah. Uh, it just makes so much more sense for myself personally just to pour all the money back into my existing business and grow that and figure out how I can double that, triple that instead of trying to jump into the next crypto or put money. I mean, shares, stocks, like they're yeah. not looking very nice at the moment. Um, yeah. And over the long term, I'm sure it's good, but mm. it's going to be much quicker to double your money by putting it into learning new skills to start a business, learning new skills to get a pay rise, learning new things to grow your business than it's going to be through. Nice. Yeah. Stocks, awesome. whatever. Increase the old income. I think it's something that a lot of people want to do. They just struggle to have the patience to do it over time, right? And then yeah. we all kind of, you know, we can get there as well. And then we're like, okay, well, you know, do you yeah. keep going or... Yeah, but yeah, I think often I'll say this, but a mentor said to me once, you know, why are you talking to me about investing in main freight stocks? Like, why don't you just invest in yourself? And I'm like, yeah. oh, shit, okay, makes yeah. sense. And yeah. it probably comes down to people backing themselves as well, I feel like, because if you put money into learning a skill that's going to get you a pay rise, that's going to be quicker than putting it into the S&P 500 or mm. an index fund. Like, yeah. that's going to take years to get a return. Whereas if you learn a new skill, you could be making money from that in a couple months. Yeah. So it probably comes down to backing themselves instead of putting trust into yeah, main freight or whoever it's gonna be. Yeah, once you have that education as well, you are like you're layering on top of it. Yeah. And so even if you get a no, then you're going, Well shit, how do I get this wrong? Or is it, am I not in the right job to be able to get a pay rise? Or you might even be brave enough to ask that question, what could yeah. I do to ensure that in three months' time it's a yes? And then yeah. you're gonna have those lessons, you go to your next role or three years later you're in a different situation, but you're going to be able to use that and people can't take it from you. Yeah. And then the next thing becomes less scary. Like if you get a no, it's like that's yeah. the worst that can happen. Like, oh, no, someone said no, nothing changes. Yeah. Um, yeah. At least they know that you want a pay rise. Yeah. And they're probably back of the mind for them. Yeah. yeah. And assuming you've got the right mindset, then you're probably more likely to do the next thing. As long as you don't let it get you down, like hearing a no, like yeah. then the next time it's like you've already been through the bad stuff, like it can't yeah. get worse. And you might get really good at it. You realize that everyone wants to do it. And then you decide to create a click funnel system where it funnels yeah. to the bottom of booking a call with you and yeah. you can teach people how to get a pay rise. Exactly. <laughs> and maybe yeah. charge them 10% of the pay rise they get. Exactly. I mean, imagine if you could do that and you were helping people just showing them how to update their CVs and yeah. stuff like that to get a pay rise and you have a ton of people at scale do that. Yeah. Great yeah. business there. That, uh, someone will be doing that. Oh, yeah. For sure. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Right, mate, that's been uh, fascinating. Thank you for joining me over these last couple of podcasts. There's a lot of value in there. Uh, keen to, to see where you get to with your journey and what you keep doing. I think uh, for some of the business owners out there as well, might get you back with some more specific questions around like getting granular on growing Instagram, for instance, and things like that, because yeah. you're obviously doing that for some pretty big clients around the world. So it'd be stupid not to tap into your knowledge uh, for those people here in New Zealand. So Thanks for giving up your time, mate, and an insight as to you know, what you do and also how people can start thinking about making 100 grand online. Cheers. Thanks for having me, and thanks for all the stuff that you do. Great education out there for everyone to learn from. Awesome, mate. Appreciate it.